it's Mayor K. I'm with Lewis Howes. What's up? <laughs> we're out here to play a little basketball, chill, get some motivation and inspiration. Let's play? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you get that question a lot, like what's your vision? For me, my vision is to inspire 100 million people. To show them how to make a full-time living doing what they love. Because I believe when we do the things we love the most and we make money around that, we treat ourselves better, we treat others better, we're healthier, happier. The world makes room for passionate people. That's right. Oh, get it! Oh, yes! Oh. <laughs> what works every time for you? Oh, wow. Something simple that we're like, People always love no matter what it is. So for me, I think um, I like using the emotion of, of, of smiles and laughter and happiness. So what I like to do is create an atmosphere where we do that. So for example, we took a bed around New York City and we placed it around and the people to jump on a bed. A bed, a queen size bed. We took it around the U-Haul, stopped it off in Times Square, Union Square, Columbus Circle. We put it there, stepped back, people came by, they touched it, they jumped on it, they pillow fight. Really? And, we just, and people just tapped into their inner child. I've followed this philosophy of, there's a Chabad Rebbe called uh, the Babas Rebbe, and he said that every single person could be a lamplighter. And what that means? A lamplighter. A lamplighter. You know what a lamplighter is? A lamp Someone who lights a lamp. There you go, right? Well, back in the day, what it used to be was like this lamplighter, we'd go around the streets when it was dark at night, and he would go and lamp the lamps and light up the streets of the city. This day and age, what we are is that each and every one, I believe, has an inner spark, an inner soul, so to speak. You can dub that any way you like. And what we have the power to do is inspire someone to inspire them to a do of action. And then they can now achieve their own, build their own community of people and their own lamplighters and go out and just illuminate this world. That's what it's about. I don't think you have to change the world, I think you have to illuminate the world. Mm. Now we all need someone or a book or an audio or a video to awaken us up, I feel like. Yeah. And that's something you're doing, that's something I try to do to bring on the best people on my show and interview people to give people tools or insights of like something that can waken them up, just like you said. So yeah. exactly. that's it, man. It's a catalyst. For me, I read the book The Four Hour Work Week about 10 years ago. Mm. And um, it was the catalyst for me. It showed me a whole new world of like how to build a business that I had no clue was even possible. I never made money in my life. I was just a pro athlete trying to live my dream that way. But I wasn't making a lot of money doing that. And for me, the definition of greatness is really following the thing you love the most and making the maximum impact on people around you. What is you, what not go take action. You know? And with that draw, because so many when you give, and you give a lot, how do you replenish that energy? For me, it's more about the impact. I can't keep. I can't take money with me. You know, I, sure, I want to make a lot of money, but I can't take that with me when I'm dead. But the impact I create will continue to live on beyond me. And w was there like a changing point in your life in career? Did you always think this way as a child? Or was there like an element, like yeah. something, an action, that something that happened to you or someone? I think I always thought this way because I always felt like I was the one left behind. I was the youngest of four. I didn't have any friends growing up. You know, my brother was in prison for four years when I was eight years old, so none of the parents in my neighborhood would allow their kids to hang out with me because they thought I was like bad or something, yeah. Um, so I think I was just always like, never felt accepted, never felt like anyone understood me or I had any connections or real true friendships until middle school, high school, things started to change. But it was kind of like that, I always question like, why am I here? And that's why like bullying and, and kids that pick on other kids is like really a challenging uh, subject and a touching subject for me because I feel like it can really develop someone's emotional mindset early on if they don't have that sense of community or connection or love. And that's why every day I try to think about what can I do to make the biggest impact in every day possible with where I'm at in my life, with the energy I have. So what do you do on your downtime? Sports? Uh, oh! Oh! You got that? You got that? That's like dude perfect! Do you have like two things you can tell people when they have self-doubt? What, what's something when someone doubts themselves? Yeah, I think everyone's felt that. I mean, the greatest people in the world have had yeah. self-doubt at some point. It comes down to just being clear on your vision. When we are clear on our vision, then it's easier to let go of self-doubt. So if you're like, here's my vision and here's why I stand by my vision and here's what I'm going after. Now, the bigger the vision, the more challenges you're gonna face. If you have small dreams, it's gonna be a lot easier. But if you're actually trying to make a massive impact, then get ready for the most incredible suffering, pain, or challenges to come your way, because it's not gonna be easy. So I think just having the awareness, like I'm setting myself up for constant failure, because the greatest leaders and world changers ever, the only way they became successful was through a million failures. So every single day you gotta be thinking, how can I fail today? Which is really, I frame failure as feedback. So what's the thing I need to learn today to get better? But if you don't master the skill, you're not gonna have the confidence in yourself. So you gotta put in the work. When I was public speaking early on, 
the first year, I would go every single week to public speaking class. And I had zero confidence the first six months. But I went every single week, I would see little improvements, and then I gained more confidence the more I did it. So it's just about being consistent right. and being committed to a bigger vision than yourself. Yeah, I think it's challenging because we're all in different places and some people may need to stay in a job that they don't love for a while to continue to provide for themselves and their, their family or whatever it may be. But I think it's always be thinking about like, what is the bigger dream that you want to be tackling? And what's the action step you can take today to get you one step closer? What's the mentor you can reach out to? What's the book you can read that can give you the tools? What's the podcast, the video you can listen to or watch? Google's house. To help you, yeah, just take action towards it. And if you're on the path, then I think that's a great step. You don't have to be all in right now, but be on the path. Ha <laughs> ha, what a guy. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man, appreciate you. Dude, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Be a lamplighter. <laughs> be a lamplighter. <laughs>